Hello, good evening. It's a great honor for me to stay here in San Francisco. I'm staying here because of the thousands of Ukrainians who are giving up their lives during the last three years for me and millions of people to have a chance to live in a better country. Here's Ukraine. It's a big country located in the center of Europe, and this is why it was conquered by a different empires centuries by centuries, one after another. Only 25 years ago, we became independent from the last empire, the Soviet Union. But being an independent state, we faced corrupt government. One after another, these politicians and oligarchs were coming and stealing billions from the state budget. In 2014, under the presidency of Viktor Yanukovych, the corruption grew to an enormous scale. Imagine the situation when going to the doctor, you have to pay bribe. When to get admitted to the university, you were paying. You could buy any position in a government. You could buy any court decision. Under Viktor Yanukovych, his political enemies was imprisoned. He smoothed and controlled the press. He rigged the elections several times. For us, Ukrainians, the only hope was the association agreement with the European Union. For us, it was a chance to bring a Western standard of life to our country and to our government. But at the last day, when our ex-president had to sign this association agreement, he just rejected to do that. In one day, he changed the political direction of the whole country, said that now we have to move toward Russia, a country that was trying to occupy our territory, to take over our territory for centuries. Of course, people were indignant, and they went to the central square of the Kyiv, to the Maidan. There were about like thousands of um, mainly young people who were protesting peacefully, singing songs, giving speeches, encouraging each other, like a few days. But then one night at 4 a.m., they were beaten bloodily by the riot police, we call it Berkut, that was sent by the government. That was enough. That, that was too much. The next day, thousands of Ukrainians went to the streets all over the country, in each city. Almost each person I know was at that moment at the street. I was at the central square of my city with my family, and it goes like that for, it went like that for three months. Day after day, on frozen cold, we were staying, saying no to the corrupt government. We went through this unique moment of the national unity. We said goodbye to a Soviet heritage at that moment. We chosen a society based on a values and rule of law. But one day, snipers started shooting at us. With this guy, first victim, his name, is, his name was Sergei Nigoyan. Our normal life just crashed. I was shocked. I didn't know what can I personally do to stop the killings. I decided to show the video. We want to be free from a dictatorship. We want to be free from the politicians who work only for themselves, who are ready to shoot, to beat, to injure people just for saving their money, just for saving their houses, just to saving their power. I want these people who are here, who have dignity, who are brave, I want them to live a normal life. We are civilized people, but our government are barbarians. 
that's not a Soviet Union. We want our courts not to be corrupted. We want to be free. I know that maybe tomorrow we will have no phone, no internet connection, and we will be alone here. And maybe policemen will murder us one after another when it will be dark here. That's why I ask you now to help us. We have this freedom inside inside our hearts. We have this freedom in our minds. And now I ask you to build this freedom in our country. You can help us only by telling this story to your friends, only by sharing this video. Please share, share it. Speak to your friends, speak to your family, speak to your government and show that you support us. This video went viral in a few days, but nothing helped. During three days, like next three days, 100 people were killed on the streets. We called these people the Heavenly Hundred. This is how one Ukrainian artist see them watching us from the sky. We are grateful because with the sacrifice of these people, we get new understanding of what our country means for us. And we understood that if someone is giving up their lives for that, we have to do whatever we can to help this country to prosper, to be democratic and independent state. But just after the revolution finished, our dictator ran away. Our neighbor, Russia, didn't want us to become an independent state, a really independent and prosperous. Russia, as an, any authoritarian state, doesn't need a democracy on their, on their border. They sent their troops, they annexed Crimea just at the moment when we were mourning our victims. They occupied part of the east of Ukraine, brought their tanks, missiles, weapons, create fake separatist movement, and prevent us from development with the, any tools they could. In this war, in this undeclared war, more than 10,000 people were killed during last three years. Among them, there are also 300 victims of the flight MH17. That were people who were flying from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, and they were shot down by the Russian missile. Together with the war, we were challenging also the corruption at the state institutions. We called that the second battlefront. A lot of protesters went, joined the government to help to create this country they were fighting for. Together, we started a transparency pro procurement. We started to improve the army. We started the reform of the police. I also joined the reforms. I worked in one of the, I still work in one of the most complicated and corrupt institution, that is customs. Because of the corruption at the customs, we lost billions of dollars per year. And to stop it, I, with the, the team of international and Ukrainian expert, started a reform in one of the biggest region of Ukraine. We simplified procedures rewrote the legislation. We fired corrupt officers. And we tried to show how the modern customs has to work. We used social network to put the light on schemes and corrupt officials. 
and to report about all the steps we are doing in the direction of the reforms. A few weeks ago, I went to the meeting with the business, and they showed me these numbers. Like one businessman stood up, stand up and said, like, do you know what does it mean? He asked me. I said, no, I've never seen these numbers. He said, that is a bribes that we were paying for all the procedures in Odessa port. That's the biggest port of Ukraine. They were paying bribe almost for each procedure before I and my team came to work there. Of course, now there is no such a systematic bribery as it was before, but it is just one region. Unfortunately, the bureaucratic system is resisting desperately. We, we, we faced blocking the legislation when we tried to implement new software that will automatize the procedures and minimize the human factor, it was blocked. When we hired new customs officers through transparent competition, no one is paying them normal salary. Why is it happening? Here is the lesson from the Ukrainian revolution. When you are fighting for something, that's not enough just to share the common vision or values. You have to create organized structures. You have to create movements, political parties, NGOs. In our case, when we were fighting, we understood why are we doing that. But there, there were no movement that united all the protesters. And then, at the revolutionary wave, who came to power? Those who could take it in the, at the right moment. And that was representatives of an old political elite. They just preserving their power right now, preserving the corruption, and we, one after another, is going away from the government. But nevertheless, we will overcome this challenge. My country, through the centuries, overcame wars, repressions, genocide. We survived and we saved our dream for a free, independent, prosperous Ukraine. And we will make it come true. I honor each of you who is struggling for freedom because it's the most noble, hard, and wonderful struggle in a life. We are united in this struggle because dignity, human values, human rights, they are the same in the whole world. Thank you for your attention.